Gear that you should bring backpacking that you may not think you need until you don't have it. Years of making mistakes backpacking has taught me never to leave home without any of these things. One of them people are definitely gonna fight me on. Just hear me out. First up on the list is a GPS beacon. Backpacking is just like any other outdoor activity. You, you gotta have the right gear. The only difference with backpacking is if you don't have the right gear, you die. Now that's where this little thing comes in handy. Most people think that a cell phone is sufficient and at the very least you should have a downloaded offline map for GPS usage. But when shit really hits the fan, a cell phone is really not going to do anything. Even if you have GPS on a phone, you're not going to have service enough to send out an SOS message. Beacons like this have a dedicated SOS button. They also have the ability to message loved ones. This is one of the cheaper options out there to spot Gen 3. I have pre-programmed two messages to send out to family. Now if you're one of those people that have to text family members the whole time when you're out on the trail, you might want to go with like the Garmin inReach. You can actually physically text on that device. It always surprises me on trail how many people see this on my strap and ask me what it is. These are experienced backpackers that just don't know the advantages of having a true dedicated beacon on you. Being able to let people know at home that I'm safe at night as well as peace of mind for myself knowing that I always have a way out. The beacon always comes with me on backpacking trips. The next one on the list might be my favorite thing I'm gonna talk about today, my fire starters. I've used tons of fire starters over the years and these are definitely my favorite I've ever used. These are made by Bigfoot Bushcraft. You can get them in these little tins. There's different styles of tins you can get. Get them in bulk, big bags of them like this. But these are so superior to other fire starters for so many different reasons. So they're wax coated, fully waterproof. They have like a five minute burn time. And my favorite thing about this is it doesn't smell like fish. If you've ever used Esbit fire cubes, uh, they just smell absolutely terrible. I cannot stand using those fire starters. So another fire starter I used to use was cotton balls dipped in Vaseline. And that works if you got the time and if you have Vaseline at home. Like right now, I'd probably have to go buy the Vaseline. So it's not really more convenient than these. The Vaseline Vaseline, cotton balls, they just kind of get messy. I'm gonna put a link to these down below, first line of the, the video description so you guys can check them out. And I just want you to know that, yeah, it's an affiliate link, but I reached out to them. I emailed Bigfoot Bushcraft and I said, listen, I've used nothing but your fire starters for the past two years. I believe in your product and I think all my followers need to know about this. And they sent me a bunch more, which is awesome. And I want to show you guys how to use this. So basically you take the two ends, you kind of twist them back and forth. And if you forget how to do this on the inside of the tin, it actually has the directions. Bend it back and forth, rub the halves against each other in a circular motion to fluff, pull apart and light the exposed ends. So five minutes of burn time out of this and you don't even need to use the second half. If your wood's being very uh, stubborn, you can always throw in an extra because they're super lightweight, super packable. You don't need to keep them in a bag like the Vaseline because they're not gonna get all over everything. They don't stink up your gear which is awesome. They have other cool stuff too, like uh, these ferro rods. This is about the perfect fire steel in my eyes. It's really thick. It's just a nice length. There's lots of cool stuff on their website. I don't see myself ever using a different fire starter on the trail now that I've discovered these. Small, light, packable, windproof, waterproof, scent free, and available at Bigfoot Bushcraft using my link in the description. Tell them Bryce sent you. Next on the list is tape. I just found this. Pack out the trash you find. Like I said, tape. One of those things that I used to not bring and it got me every now and then. It doesn't even really matter what kind of tape. You just have to have some type of adhesive strip because you are going to have gear failures out there. It's inevitable. If a tent pole breaks, you gotta have a way to fix that if you get a hole in your rain tarp. So I usually carry like a foot or two of tape in my first aid kit here. And I carry Dyneema tape. So when I had to have a Dyneema shelter, if I get a hole in that tarp, it's pretty much a permanent fix. Most of the time out there, all you need is something for a temporary fix, getting you through the trip until you get home to properly patch it. So you should pretty much either have like Luco tape, uh, Gorilla tape, duct tape. You know, maybe if you, if you don't carry a first aid kit, you get a big gash in your arm, wrap that thing in duct tape, good to go. Duct tape, a man's band-aid. It's windy and cold. And it might rain again. Which brings me to the next thing on the list. Now you don't always get lucky and find a nice waterproof shelter. I mean, I just built this five minutes it took. Basically, you wanna have a waterproof backpack. So that is why you need pack liners. Now I know you got a pack cover and you got a waterproof backpack, but that don't mean shit. 
To have a fully waterproof backpack, you got to have a pack liner or dry bags inside at least. I just basically use this. This is just like a trash bag. Even if you don't want to line the entire backpack with it, just have the things that you really, really can't afford to get wet, like your clothing bag and for God's sakes, your, your sleeping bag. My backpacks are all waterproof and I still take the time to use a pack liner. Just because something is waterproof doesn't mean water's not going to get in there and it doesn't take a lot of water to really soak through some gear and really ruin your trip. So Add the extra 20 grams or whatever to your pack and pack line. Next up on the list is the plunger for your Sawyer filter. Now I know some people, they're, they're already typing. They, they got the caps lock on. And what they're saying is, Bryce, all you need is a smart water bottle with the flip top cap and you can back flush your filter. And that works, that's a great way to backwash these things until it doesn't work. Now I know people that swear by that, they've hiked the entire Appalachian Trail and used nothing but a bottle like that, and that works good if you're backwashing your filters regularly, except some people forget to backwash these all the time, and sometimes they plug up really bad. So I'll tell you a little story. I went backpacking, I went to filter my water, could not get a drop out of this thing, and I had the smart water caps, I am squeezing those things as hard as I possibly could. Absolutely could not get this thing unplugged. So if you're back washing with just the bottles often, or if it's like a little bit clogged, it works good. But I'm telling you, I was squeezing that bottle as hard as I could. I could not get this to budge until I went home, grabbed my little plunger, filled that thing up with water, and the sheer force of just ramming that water through this thing, uh, it took a good couple tries to really get it flowing again, but that was the only way I could unclog this filter. So it's a good rule of thumb to at least have two forms of water purification, whether you have two filters or iodine drops or Aquamira tabs. Depending how far away from civilization you are, how long your trip is, you definitely don't want to have only one source of water filtration, which I'm very guilty of doing, but most of the time I'm not very far out, like I can be out in a couple hours or in a day if I am out with a bunch of people. We always seem to have our own filters. So there's ways to get clean water if one were to fail. A lot of people that use these filters might not go backpacking that, that often. And if these sit uh, unattended for a long time, they tend to clog up. You definitely want to back flush them before you go. Make sure that your filters are working before you throw them back in your backpack. As long as you're back flushing them often with a bottle or whatever, you probably don't need this. But uh, I had a scare, so I, I tend to bring this more often than not now. Just squeezing them through the bottles like that, it just doesn't work as good. So if it's really, really, really clogged, you're going to wish you had this. Not everybody's going to agree with that one, but they've probably just never been in the situation where they really have needed this. Backpacking gear inevitably will fail over time. There's a, a lot of mistakes and regrets that I've had in the past and regrets in general over backpacking gear that I bought that I didn't like. I'm going to link that video right here. Definitely check that one out. Subscribe to the channel if you like this video. Check out Bigfoot Bushcraft in the link below and don't make stupid mistakes like me.